And welcome everyone to an exciting episode of The Energy That Surrounds Us. I'm your host, Michael, joined by, as usual, the awesome, talented, media guru extraordinaire, Carla. Hey, hey, good night, or good, <laughs> good evening, everybody. <laughs> We've been talking for a while. <laughs> So we, we have a very special guest joining us tonight. This is someone we've been looking forward to being on our show. We This is our first time to meet. So welcome, Lauren, to the show. Thank Yay. you for watching. Thank you. <laughs> so well, can you tell us some about you? Um. I am the founder and the psychic medium for the In Between Paranormal. Um, I've been a psychic medium since pretty much birth. And um, I've developed my skills over the years and about, who has it really been that long? 24 <laughs> years ago, <laughs> um, I started into the paranormal investigation field and was on two separate teams in Texas, then ran two separate teams in Texas. Um, I took a break having a child and then kind of, I never got out of the paranormal field, but I kind of took a step towards the side for a little bit to focus on honing my gifts even more and um, trying to figure out what other abilities I had because some were coming latently. And then a few years ago, uh, one of my best friends at the time wanted me to be their psychic medium on the team. So I joined them, had fun with that for a little while. Then I joined another team. And then here I am with my own team doing a national and somewhat international paranormal team and investigations. That's pretty exciting. It is. It really is. Um, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Um, now, I do have a degree in art and art history, and I wouldn't trade that for the world, but my calling has always been in the paranormal. That is what the higher powers that be always want me to be back on that path. Yeah. Well, here I am. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so I'm kind of curious, what was it like growing up being a medium um difficult i had i didn't know what i was and there i had family members that later i found out could help me but they chose not to so i struggled with um actually figuring out what i was um I was in a lot of different religious schools growing up. So um, Catholicism, for one thing, doesn't like the whole aspect of the paranormal or psychic abilities. They always term it, um, put in the classification of being evil. So growing up, I always thought I was an evil person because I could see the dead. I could see entities. I could talk to them. Um, I had experiences with a demonic entity you know i always thought i was evil mm. so it wasn't really it wasn't fun growing up with it um i couldn't explain how i knew what the questions would be on an english test a month in advance to anyone but i would study for it and i would get an a and how i knew i would always dream the test beforehand that's, That's a lucky gift. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lucky gift, but at the same time, I'm OCD with studying. So yeah. I was over prepping a lot for a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But it wasn't until I'm going to say after I had my child that my family was finally ready to discuss our abilities and how far back it goes in the lineage and um my grandmother didn't really understand either because she had these abilities the whole entire time 
And it wasn't until she was in, I think she was 84, when she finally sat down and talked to me. Wow. We both figured out that it was part of our lineage. And she had the same thing, same abilities as I did. And we finally came to a conclusion that we were going to work together and work and build on our abilities together. Um, so it, it was a little bit difficult because it was hard to find those people to talk to in the family. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, hard to find anyone who was willing to discuss um, in terms of with their time period that they grew up in, most people kept it quiet. Yeah. And those were the most of the individuals in my family that I tried to talk to and nobody was willing to talk. Wow. So I'm kind of curious, when you say lineage, was it your grandmother the first that had it? Or how far back have you been able to figure um, out? We have traced her lineage back to the Scottish Scottish witches. Oh, which, yeah. That's um, a group to mess around with. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> um, but do we do we think that's where it came from? We're not certain, but we have been able to trace back where it. I think we traced it back to the late 1700s, where there's some talk about it through some documentation in her family history. But it seems to have skipped some generations. So we think it's predominantly going through the Scottish, the Scottish line. We think back to the witches. We do have people on the roster, unfortunately, in the Scottish witches. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All hey, I know I work in your benefit going to Scotland. I, um, I do have a lot of interest to do that. Um, I do know I had a past life there and I do want to heal that there. So I definitely want to go to Scotland. Wow. And we have a few teams over there that have asked us to come and investigate with them over there. So. Wow. That's pretty cool. It's very cool. Um, we think that also that maybe some of the abilities came through my grandfather's line too, but we're not certain his line. Um, if you want a who's who of history, his line has got it. So we're not certain about his line, but it's definitely coming through the grandmother's side. It, it seems like it's predominantly the female side that it goes back to. Right. Uh, Mm -hmm. On our last, or I think it was our last show, um, I think this came up as well. And I had done some ancestry work and on my grandmother's side went back to the early 16, mid 1600s and found um, my great grandma like five times, six times removed or whatever it was um, that was part of the Salem witch trials. Ooh. And, and I was sitting there going, you've got to be kidding me but it's amazing to find that type of documentation oh i would be so thrilled with that yeah because oh. she's all the scotch iris side for for me for my grand grandmother on back and stuff so when you started talking about that i'm like really <laughs> yeah um the scottish witches it's a little bit harder to find the documentation you have to know you have to know the name of the document that they had during their trials. But when I found it, it was clear as day. And I was like, whoa, wait, I'm related to that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like, well, I guess it's all making sense now. <laughs> I was going to say, that, that's what I got when I did my ancestry was everything's starting to make more sense now. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Oh, my gosh. So how did you get into um, broadening your team to a national level? It wasn't 
it wasn't on purpose. It really wasn't. Um, to be honest with you, we started with the idea we're very para unity based. Um, <laughs> we not only tout it, we embody it and we encourage other teams to do it too. Mm -hmm. And we didn't realize that the paranormal field, even though there's a lot of teams that tout it, don't really have the networking for it. And there were a whole bunch of international teams out there that just reached out and said, hey, we've had this particular incident happen. This particular team has bullied us. What do we do? And we found ourselves being the support system in the ParaUnity network. And so we've just broadened out through just international teams. And we've got a couple of teams that want to, um, I think it's affiliate underneath our team name, keep their original, but affiliate yes. because of the pairing unity network. Yeah. I like that a lot. We have um, back on your promo page. Uh, we have our pair unity logo on there as well. Um, I, I'll be honest right now with what I've been seeing in the field, para unity is what's needed. Oh, exactly. It's and, yeah. I've well, noticed not only is it needed, but it needs to be reminded what it is because I keep hearing, I keep running across other paranormal investigators and teams that are like, Oh, I can't do para unity because of how this, this, and this happened. And I was like, that's not para unity. Yeah. This is para unity. And they're like, well, that sounds more like this. And I like this. And I'm like, it's the same term. It's just everyone's now gotten blemished yeah. under the term para unity. And so one of the things that Carla and I like to do is we're like, take the little polish that we're like trying to clean the word pair unity. So yeah. it's like returns to its luster. And the one thing that we've started doing on our investigations is we'll look at the location where we're going. And then we'll look at either some of the local teams that are around or the teams that are actually coming to other locations in the area. And we'll invite them out to dinner before we go on investigations. And we'll have some sort of community then. Or once we're done in the morning, we'll say, hey, do you guys want to go to IHOP with us? Let's go and let's talk. Let's broaden our network. Let's make friends. Mm -hmm. Let's be kind to each other. Yeah. There's a whole new concept there, kindness. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. And I will say I am impressed that you guys will go to breakfast after an investigation in the wee hours of the morning. We're all like, bed is calling. The pillow is calling. We'll see you when we wake up. <laughs> yeah, our last investigation. Yeah. I, yeah, the paranormal hangover was very real after that. <laughs> investigation. Very exhausting. It was. It, well, we went to bed at 4 a.m. Two of us didn't get enough sleep because we had entities messing with us all night. At seven o'clock, we woke up and decided to finish our investigation, did two more hours investigating, and then we went to breakfast. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I feel like I've drunk so much alcohol. <laughs> I don't know if it's just me getting older in the field, but yeah, it was real. That <laughs> it was yes, not yes. <laughs> Probably all the above. Yeah. <laughs> It was not a fun morning, <laughs> but we did invite some individuals to go to breakfast that morning, but they were, um, that team was actually finishing the Monroe demon house or the Monroe murder house investigation. And they were going back to their house, to uh -huh. their own places. So, yeah. Interesting. So where has been your favorite place that's left a mark on you to investigate? Hmm. That's a hard one because each place has its own special 
signature. Which one did you enjoy the most? Like, I heard, I know it was hard to say the word enjoy, but um, most memorable to, to have, most, yeah, a, a mm. most memorable type. Oh, that would be our recent one at Blackford County Jail. That one, yeah, we're still looking at the evidence going, how are we going to treat this sensitive evidence? Um, they got a little awkward. Um, it got so awkward that we thought maybe an OnlyFans page might have to be the way that we treat the evidence. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I, my gears well, market, I don't know what the market really would happened. be for SLS figures, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, I think this, um, to top that one, I would think trans Allegheny. God, that's on my bucket list. Yeah. Trans Allegheny is one of those places that if you give it love, it'll show love back to you. And it will interact. Um, so many interactions. And we had objects moving all night long. EVP. Oh, my gosh. The EVPs. I think I had like at least five class A's. Really? That night. They. But I. We were in a group with other paranormal investigators and they were approaching it with the same old thought process. And I was coming in going, hey, let's you and I talk for a minute. Um, I, I know what your name is. Could you just tell me what was your favorite thing to eat back then? Or can you tell me just a little bit about, you know, your favorite things to do? Uh -huh. And we got responses because they were really interested in the fact that we were coming at it at a different approach. Yes. Right. I agree. I, I truly believe it's all about the intent you bring in. Right. To the investigation. Right. And we're, we're a very, uh, uh, like a nurturing team, more, more of a, uh, try and have empathy for whatever happened in a location and, and approach like that. Right. And sometimes you just have to look at the investigation as maybe it's not about you, which it's not. It's right. about them. And maybe it's their therapy. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is how they're able to deal with what happened to them. Let them interact the way that they feel they should be interacting. Agree. Um, there's been times that we've just left a static recorder in a room and I'll just, before I leave, say, Hey, here's a recorder. Sometimes I have to explain what that is to them in terms sure. of what they might think it might be. Um, but here's a recorder. If you want to yell, if you want to scream, if you want to cry, if you want to get all your emotions out, if you want to tell the truth about the story that happened, mm -hmm. This device right here will let you. And some of the stories that we've gotten has crazy. been Ugh. crazy. Yeah. And some of it's um, one particular incident was um, and a, a husband was abusing his wife and locked her in a two foot by one foot closet on a daily basis. No one knew about that, but everybody saw that she had written her name, scratched her name in the backside of the closet, but nobody knew why. And we got her telling parts of the story when we gave her the, gave her the tools to be able to be vocal about it. Yeah. That's amazing. And unfortunately she's still in that abusive relationship, but she was able to get some of that emotion out. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the important thing. Yeah. Have so, you ever? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, have you ever 
went to a location multiple times and felt like you started having a rapport with yes. spirits that were there. Yes. Um, the uh, Civil War POW camp in Tyler, Texas, the land in Redland, Texas, and then I will even go so far as to say um, the Urban Campbell Speakeasy in um, Hartford City, Indiana. Uh, the Speakeasy, the Speakeasy, I'm going to say from day one, had a rapport with me. Um, the spirits there and entities were, for some reason, they felt responsible for me. So the several times that we went back there, they became protective of me. So yeah, there was a report going on. But um, the last time that we were there, we got more of a conversation going and it became one of those that they expressed how much they wanted to be crossed over. They expressed that they knew that the speakeasy wasn't long for this world. And they actually asked if we would ask the owners to allow someone to come in and cross them over. Mm. I don't know too many locations where they ask for the owners to ask someone to come in. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, the report, <laughs> yeah, those top three locations I've had a lot of rapport with. The POW camp, they, uh, they respond very well to women very well to women um oh, I bet. in fact a couple of them have asked why is a woman in the camp but they they love women and they love to be able to um when i tune in they love to escort women around so the last few times that i was there um they remembered who i was because it's been like it was about five years between the times mm -hmm. they remembered who I was and they basically asked me to somehow figure out how to get the place back into order, back into shape. All right. Now to be clear, when we say the POW camp in Tyler, it was a Confederate POW camp housing union prisoners, correct? correct. Okay. Correct. Um, and they had, I think it was around 300 to 350 people died there. Um, so it wasn't, it wasn't a massive amount of individuals, mainly because they had running water. They had clean, they had clean things. They just had, um, injuries and the um oh, what was the disease that was coming through at the time they had disease and illness coming through yeah i was gonna say and, you pick your pick in the civil war time and they were wearing a lot of wool in the middle of texas heat yeah the heat strokes yeah. were very much a thing uh, so a lot of people um a lot of people went out by heat stroke um, now across the street, I'm going to say maybe a quarter of a mile away is the actual cemetery where most of those individuals are buried. Oh, okay. So if you guys ever get to go over there, I would check out the cemetery too. Oh, we love to check out cemeteries. <laughs> We've been late to investigations because we, we would pass a cemetery and go, we need to stop. <laughs> Ooh, let's go here first. Yeah, that's I, right. Very, <laughs> very guilty. We even were in a city doing a whole lot of investigating, scouting, and on the way home, we're like, "Oh, look, there's a cemetery here." So we pull in, and we got, and there's two guys working on it, and they're like, "Oh, are you guys here visiting?" Oh, we just were curious about it. He goes. Well, if you want the really older ones, it's up the road a little bit and on the other side. And so we ended up doing both of them. <laughs> nice. Nice. 
Yeah, um, I was almost late to Blackford County because I was on one of those back roads and I passed a graveyard. Old graveyard. And it was like, I'm sorry, I've got to turn around. I can't pass this one up. The church looks like it was about to cave in on itself. This is all the all the criteria that I want right now. Yeah. So let's let's just check this out. Oh. Yeah. Now, do I remember where it was? No. But <laughs> See, that's the thing. It's like even we've been to the city, you know, a couple of times now, and we'll drive back, and it's like. I'll keep looking and going, didn't we have the, like a cemetery at this point that we went to? And it's like, rarely do we ever pass the same way twice. So it's always yeah. like, got to strike when the moment's there. Right. We always and try and avoid, avoid freeways and take back roads wherever we go. So it's so much better views. I agree. And you don't know what you're going to pass. That's right. <laughs> there was one whole town that I went through going um and this isn't on the paranormal list because it's got an energy here that is so weird what's going on yeah. now, do I remember the name no but I do remember the city that it was not too far from so <laughs> we're getting there we're getting yeah. there. <laughs> well one of the things we're struggling with here in Texas area ironically and I say ironically, because we're a historic state that's got a lot of history to it. Yep. But if you mention the word ghost, everyone's like, no. Yeah. But then if you get certain people talking, they're like, oh, yeah, there's ghosts here. There's ghosts there. And you'll go like, why don't you guys talk about us? We don't want to be stigma as a haunted town. I'm like, why? Yeah. <laughs> Do oh, you yeah. not see what's popular right now? Yeah. There's a difference between talking to like the city council people and then talking to locals. Right. You know, right. right. Huge difference. And yeah. look at Jefferson, Texas. They've got the history and they're also bringing in the paranormal teams because of their history and the ghosts. Mm -hmm. my, that's my favorite, my favorite town. That's the town I was talking about. Yep. I absolutely love Jefferson. Yep, me too. Yep. If, I can, the if I can buy a location there mm -hmm. or buy, yeah, I mean, heck, I, I came really close. Um, I think it was the end of last year. I was looking at a house and, uh, and I just thought, God, I just live too far away have to hire somebody to manage it and everything else, but dang, I just love that town. I yeah. love, there's something about Jefferson that's not yeah. only the energy, it's, there's a comforting feel to it. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're actually going to be back there April 1st. Yeah. Um, where at? Which location? Uh, the History Haunts and Legends with Jody. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And we got our team kind of spread out between a bunch of different hotels so we can all take turns <laughs> going into the different hotels. That's yeah. smart. That's okay. smart. <laughs> well, usually we all try and get together and then I, then we were just thinking, dang, <laughs> we split up. <laughs> yeah, that way you can tag team and switch off. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, the only hope is though is you don't get somebody who's gonna like stir everybody awake and then leave and it's like, oh great, I get to go to sleep now with you having stirred everybody and now they're all wanting to talk <laughs> all night. <laughs> well, you're staying in my in my most favorite place. So yeah, I got the I'll, I'll get them place. all going up in the attic and then say goodnight and then you can have the rest of the evening yourself. <laughs> Oh, you yeah. like me. <laughs> I do that too. I do that too. <laughs> well, actually, the, the cool thing is, is I'm actually staying in the room where they've recently been having spirits that peek out from under the door. I'm like, that's mm -hmm. going to be super cool. Dude, that's awesome. 
Oh, please get evidence of that. Uh, I know. I'm like, oh, I'm going to feel so bad. Get your, get your camera up. going the whole time. Yeah. Seriously, <laughs> you do need eyes and ears on the ground. Yeah. That would be crazy. That's but awesome. Yeah, so some of the team will be across the street in the con saloon, yes. which will be fun because Carl and I learned a story about one of the rooms of the con that I don't even think they even talk about in the uh, ghost in walk. The walk. Yeah. The That's presidential. Even... Is it the, didn't they call it like the president suite then the corner? I don't know if it was the president's suite or what, but they're the ironic thing is if you look at the wall, there is one thing off, and this is the wall that has the mural painted on it with ghosts in it. Huh. And a waitress actually told us the story of why there's one oddity over there. And it's like, Carl and I looked at each other and we're like, we totally need to get in that hotel yeah. to get to that room. <laughs> <laughs> and then some of us are staying in Azalea's. Oh. That place. So we're kind of all spread out. We'll be able to hotel hop for a while. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be an awesome investigation night. So speaking of investigations, I'm kind of curious. You kind of hinted at it, but I'm like curious what your take of. Do you go in and are you one of those teams that's like you'll have some members that like to instigate and get really like in people's faces? Or do you find you get more by being the quiet, just normal talk um we go in and as i've mentioned before i go in and i do a 10 to 15 minute talk to all the entities there seeing what our purpose is what we're going to be doing how we're going to run the evening if they want to interact good if they don't that's cool we're not upset right catch us during the silly hours you may come into some comedic gold there you know hey um and then we usually go quiet or we'll start, you know, going room by room and just trying to get a feel of, yeah, this doesn't really feel like someone's in here. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is, someone's quiet. Maybe we just leave a recorder going, that type of thing. We approach it more quiet, more calm, establish a relationship, mm -hmm. establish a um, a baseline of care. And it's surprising that going that direction, how much more interactions we get. Um, and it's really surprising how much more protective some of the spirits get too, because we're showing care and they show care back by being more protective, more interactive, mm -hmm. trying to keep the darker stuff away. Mm -hmm. Even though sometimes I like playing with the darker stuff. They still try and keep it away. Right. Yeah. Um, well, you, you got to think too, when you're walking into these places, you're walking in with your guard down. Right. So you're, you're being more vulnerable. Right. Um, to build that relationship up. Right. Um, I, I have problems with some team when we've had some team members in the past wanting to be um, in your face, um, sometimes antagonistic, um, almost on the edge of provoking. And that usually just shuts everything down. Yeah. Um, and you can, you can honestly feel the energy shift from, oh, we've got new, new people here. We want to interact to, no, we're done. Yeah. We're out. And usually I don't keep those members on the team for too long because I much rather go in calm, cool, and collected instead of getting them to the point of being so riled up, we can't calm them down. Yeah. And that's my thing. At the end of an investigation, I will also do a 10 to 15 minute talk and calm them down, get them back to baseline, tell them that if they want more interaction, if they want more communication, the next team Tell them, talk to them, mm -hmm. ask them questions. 
Yeah. You may be surprised that they might be able to help you in ways that other teams can't. Yeah. Um, we do not ever leave a location in chaos. I, I, I just can't do that. I can't leave it to where either the tour guides and docents come in the next morning and they have to deal with the fallout or the next paranormal team comes in and they have to deal with the fallout. I just, right. Everything mm -hmm. needs to be back to baseline. Mm -hmm. So you kind of mentioned silliness. What, what is kind of some of the <laughs> silliness that goes on in investigations <laughs> for you guys? Um, Lord. Uh, well, there's always the comedic gold hours between one and four where you're very tired and slightly coming down off of caffeine. Um, our silliness sometimes um, gets a little bit of adult jokes, but that's just to keep things going. And yeah. All right. <laughs> um, there, uh, our last investigation, we had an investigator who tried to do a comedy hour. <laughs> I like how you say tried. <laughs> I'm going to say try because, well, we did get audible laughter from a couple of it. <laughs> oh my but God. it was more of the laughter like, hey, dude, you tried. It was great. But, you know, someone else needs to get on stage next. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, we've been known to do that. Uh, yeah, we've done, we've been known to tell jokes and most of the time when we tell jokes, the, they beat us to the punchline. All <laughs> 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 right. It's funny. Um, especially the way that, um, if we're doing a spirit box session and they beat us to the punchline, if it's said in a like very monotonous yeah, to get to the other side, it gets yeah, it gets really funny. Um, we just try and keep things light and lighthearted as possible. Um, there's too many times during investigations where you get that tense moment, and you've got to be able to break it up. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. Um, and sometimes it's not even us breaking it up. Uh, we did an investigation at, um, I think it's ranked number two as the most haunted cemetery in Michigan. And there, you walk in and you can honestly feel the darkness. There's like, is there? It will make its presence known. But it wasn't us that broke up that seriousness. We started having our spirit boxes go off randomly weren't on but they were going off randomly i dropped in and realized there were kids playing with our spirit boxes so we started playing tag with the kids and our spirit boxes and we did this for 30 45 minutes nice That's pretty cool. uh, michael was on his tiktok live i was on mine and we caught his goes off and he says, run to me. And then mine would go off. And I tell them to go run after Diane and hers would go off. And she's like a good 500 feet away. And we were telling them to go after certain individuals. And you just hear the pings go off. Very cool. It was the most fun, lighthearted thing that could have brought um, more light into that cemetery at that particular moment. Yeah. Um, it broke that seriousness. Yeah. Well, they probably don't get the opportunity very often to do that. No, they don't. Not at the cemetery. Um, when you go into the cemetery, it basically looks like the place that you would put your loved one or loved one if you want to forget about them. Oh. Oh, nice. That's pretty sad. Yeah. So they, they don't get that much um, play. And at that point, I think we showed the adults that were still there that we were okay, that they could interact with us more. And they did, um, despite the dark entity there. Yeah. 
they were still willing to interact. Yeah. It's yeah. not always us that breaks the monotonous. It's sometimes the entities, the spirits, the ghosts. Yeah. Yeah. So I mentioned backstage, I was going to ask you one question. And I'm looking at the clock and I'm feeling like this is a good time to ask. <laughs> Where does the name the in between paranormal come from? Um, it comes from um, an idea that my um, best friend and co founder and I had when we're dealing with, well, when I'm dealing with the dead, they're not the only ones that I'm dealing with. I'm dealing, I'm the bridge between the living and the dead. I'm also the bridge between other entities and other in this world. I'm the bridge between sometimes the archangels and the living. I'm the bridge for anything and everything in between. And that's what we are looking at as in the paranormal field is we're not only dealing with the deceased. There are other entities out there that we are dealing with and everything and anything in between. Very good. That's why we came up with the in-between paranormal, because we don't want to just focus on one little tiny niche of the paranormal. We want to look at it all. We're branching out this year to looking at cryptids. Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing more um, UFO and alien interactions and working with um, some of the MUFON network which is going to be fun, but yeah. <laughs> a little bit nerdy over that, but yeah. <laughs> but that, that's how we're looking at it. We're not going to just be focusing on the dead. Yes, we're going to be working and doing experiments and trying to prove that. But there's the whole, there's everything else in between that needs to be looked at as in this whole realm too, mm -hmm. that is also connected. Right. Like your title says, the energy that surrounds us, it connects us all. That's connecting everything. Mm -hmm. Right. And I will say my background wise with the paranormal, the only thing I haven't honestly come across is cryptids. Mm -hmm. And it's probably just because I wasn't looking for them. So I probably have crossed paths, but because it wasn't in my frame. Right. Like, yeah, you ran by. That, that's nice. Go have fun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm focused over here. <laughs> but one of the things I think that is like you're saying in the paranormal that people don't think about is like I was sky watching with some friends. And for those that don't know, sky watching is you look at the sky for UFOs. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm on a stage looking out and it's outside and i have the owner standing next to me and we're just talking and all of a sudden this loud like bang like something drops right behind me and i'm like what the and she heard it too and she's looking at me like you heard that right i was like yeah we turn around and there's a quartz rock on the ground or on the stage awesome. right behind me. And I'm like, so to paint the picture, for them to drop something, like someone to drop something, they would have to climb upstairs, go over a little half wall, cross over the entire stage to where, you know, we all would see or hear them to drop that and then disappear before you turn around. Right. So there was literally no way anybody dropped that behind us. And I would have felt her movement, like if she lifted up her arm to drop it, to be like, ooh. I would have been like, I would have felt that and noticed that. We were that close. And they looked. she looked at me and it was like, she goes, you need to pick that up. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why? And she goes, because that's for you. That's your gift from the spirits that are here and i was like that was super cool yeah that is awesome <laughs> that is awesome 
But did you catch any UFOs that night either? Actually, I didn't, like, I've seen a light phenomenon in the sky that looked like the sky was on fire. Ooh. So it could have been a UFO, you know, in it, but it was like, no. And the other thing that I caught was, like, it looked like you could see the energy beams of the planet reaching up to the sky or the sky reaching down to the planet. There was, like, black hazy lines going down against the blue and the black tree line i was like man those are like those are my favorite photos <laughs> <laughs> i was like you know crystal aside i'm like these photos man <laughs> that's awesome though yeah but yeah it's like and it's like i tell people that and they're like oh yeah well that's cool that that happened to you and i'm like <laughs> It's paranormal. Why Why are we not, like, everybody going, that's something we should check out. Everyone's just like, yeah, that's a cool experience, too. I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you're going to come across those people in the field. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I will say for you, from research I've done, being in Michigan, you're looking at cryptids. You have a cryptid that is famous here in Texas up there. Mm -hmm. So have fun with that one. And that's the dog, man. Oh, yes. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, our cryptid hunter wants to do a Traverse City uh, cryptid hunt for the dog, man. I'm like, okay. Now we're going to have to explain this ER trip of why he lost his arm. Yeah, <laughs> I'm squeaking the dog toy because I know that's gonna happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, and the fun <laughs> things that I found in my research of the dog man that it's like why I'm like I'm happy knowing about the cryptids, but I'm not actively out there pursuing. Is they're like it'll show up behind your car, yeah, and it will either chase your car, and I'm like. Oh, it's it's odd. If you're chasing me in my car, I'm like, I don't care about speed limits. <laughs> I'm like, I'm getting to safety fast. But it's like, you know, it's just a thought of like, you know, why why are we going to go after something to document something we know is like literally like seven out of ten times hunting us? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, we're, we're branching, well, the cryptid hunter is going to be branching off into the dog man this summer and um, the Wendigo in Hilton. Uh -oh. <laughs> so that one's going to be fun, too. Like I said, yeah. I'm trying to come up with these alibis for ER stories. Because <laughs> at some point, we're going to have to have one, I feel. Um, yes. But uh, you know what actual cryptid is in your neck of the woods that I think a lot of people don't realize is? The melon heads? Mothman. Yeah, Mothman is too. He's been seen around Chicago, and I'm like, Chicago is not that far from Michigan. No, it's not. Mm -mm. And then we also have the Michigan Triangle, which is um, UFO and alien. Yes. I have actively begun studying the Alaska Triangle, Bermuda Triangle, Michigan's Triangle. There's a Northeast Triangle. Mm -hmm. The Ring of Fire has a triangle. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting to see where, where those journeys take us, um, especially the cryptids. We've been working with some cryptids already, but we've been, um, we've got several individuals in Kentucky that are um, Sasquatch and the, the evidence they've sent us has been absolutely beautiful and phenomenal. Wow. But I'm looking at some of these cryptids as in we don't need to hunt them. We need to study them, kind of like Jane Goodall. Yep. Yeah. Um, just study the family units. 
there's one individual in Kentucky who's got a whole entire family unit protecting him. And he's protecting them and giving them food, their uh, their privacy. Um, he's got seven acres, so he's wow. he can give that to them. And the footage that he sent, sent me, and I'm just like, I don't want to show the world this. Yeah, I want to protect these with my whole heart. Not yeah, everything just, needs to be mounted on the wall. Exactly. Right. It's like you're going to get some nut job that's like, I want the trophy. And it's like, that's not why we do what we do. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, there's a cryptid hunter in Texas who has, um, I think, a juvenile in his freezer. Oh. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, he was one of my father-in-law's best friends. <laughs> and I came undone on him when mm -hmm. he was showing the photos to my father-in-law and me. I came undone on him because it was like, that was life. Yeah. yeah. That was something precious. And you destroyed that. Yeah. And no. then, yeah. I will say, you know, it's different if it was a situation of if it was him versus me. Then I'm like, I don't feel so guilty, like, going, I had to survive. Right. I couldn't run. It was chasing me. It wasn't going to let me leave. But to go out and purposefully hunt to kill, mm -hmm. yeah, that I don't like. Yeah. yeah. And... and uh, Caddo Lake is really well known for Sasquatch and Bigfoot. And I know quite a few hunters that go out and I think they've got it recorded and they blare it through their speakers, the um, calls to gather them. I don't think that's a fair sport. No, no. There, I think, I think studying cryptids can be done in such a more beneficial way than trying to go after and get a hand or a foot or the mm -hmm. head mounted on something or right. here's so, this thing in the freezer. Yeah. I kind of want your take on the controversial aspects like Bigfoot. Do you think, are you in the camp of he is a living creature here on earth? Or and you were in the camp that he's an interdimensional being that occasionally comes and visits, or where what camp are you in on what Bigfoot Sasquatch um, is? He's both. I think um, I think that they are very much grounded on Earth, but they are. How do I explain this? <laughs> Once again, I need a whiteboard. Um, <laughs> they're able to, it's kind of like what, yeah. okay. They're able to shift dimensions. All like, right. um, I don't want to use predator, but they kind of do the predator thing. Phasing. Yeah. 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 That's what they can do, but they are very much grounded here. Now, do I think they were originally from here? No, I don't. I don't. Yeah. Although, you know, I, I do love when, like, we were in Broken Bow and we stopped at a shop <laughs> and it said the, uh, what was it? It goes Sasquatch, still the champion of hide and seek. <laughs> And I was like, that is like all we need. It's like that's the perfect yeah. it is. Like, it go is. with that prize. It is. Um, our cryptid hunter says that the first time that he finds one, he's gonna run up and hug it. I was like, Well, then you're on your own, buddy. Because yeah. I can't guarantee you your safety if you run after it and hug it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have a theory about that. Is you know, they can shift between dimensions, like you say, or phase in and out. I feel very confident they can read our intentions. Oh, they do. And so if we're, like, running up to them, meaning no harm, I don't think they're going to, like, attack us or anything. They'll probably just be like, 
maybe you step back and be like, why do you want to hug me? What is this about? And maybe not run (laughs) up to something. (laughs) But throw them off their game. Throw them off their game. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I always felt like because we could never, like, nobody really gets like footprints or finds their camps that. I was always like, because they don't actually live here. I think they just come here to, like, kind of walk around and just be, like, on vacation, so to speak, and then they go back home. And then, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, in, vacation in a world where everyone's like, I want that trophy. And it's like, really? Why? <laughs> I just, I can just see Bigfoot wearing a vacation T-shirt. <laughs> With a little umbrella drink. <laughs> with, with the with the shirt that says I survived my vacation to Earth. Earth. <laughs> yeah. Oh Lord. I'd be no. questioning why they came here. Right. <laughs> what were you thinking? Make sure it didn't happen, sir. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what in your mind made Earth the best vacation spot for you? <laughs> What were you thinking? Yeah. <laughs> I'd be it, like, I'm going to talk to your travel agent. Like these? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're actually approaching our hour. So I want to make sure if anyone wants to find you, how do they find you guys? Um, you guys can find us on Facebook, the In Between Paranormal. We have a business page, and we also have the In Between paranormal insights group we also have a rock page but we're still slowly getting that up and going where you can find our little rocks that we place at haunted locations um you can find us on tiktok the in between paranormal instagram the in between the official in between paranormal and twitter you name it we're there practically yeah so real quick i've seen this rock deal that you got going on what's the story behind that um the story behind it is we want to make our we want to make our group our team more interactive with the public so we have started painting rocks um the ones that i paint look like little ghosts and on the bottom it'll um, have the information of uh the in between paranormal TikTok page or the insights group or the rock group. And you just take a photo of where you found it. And there it is. It's your collector's item. But every once in a while, we're going to throw out special rocks. And these special rocks are going to be basically tickets to go to paranormal investigation with us. So we're upping the ante and making it even more participatory if you guys want a free investigation with us, you got to find the rock. Here's the locations that we left the rocks. Can you go find them if you're in those areas? Um, we've had, uh, I think we've had about seven out of the last 10 rocks we placed found. So it's become, it's become a really fun thing for people to do who follow us. Kind of like a where's where's Waldo. Exactly. And we're um, occasionally we'll go a step further. I've got some of these little squishy stress ghosts. Yeah. (laughs) That we'll just we'll put on cars and tell them that they've been ghosted and Uh, get their business card with it. Oh my god. Tell them to follow us on Instagram. Nice. Or Twitter or TikTok. So So the point is you're supposed to leave the rock behind after you find it for the next people to come through or if you want to some people are collecting them well i imagine the investigation rocks you're gonna be like take this with you so you don't end up with everybody showing you photos of the rock going right we found it (laughs) um at blackford county jail we left three around the jail and only one has been found so there's a couple of ghosts hiding yeah, a couple of ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say one of the things, though, that I have noticed about rocks is 
You can place them in one spot, come back in a day or two, and it's in another spot, and nobody touches it. <laughs> yep. So you may have let the toy for the spirits of the jail to go, hey, let's see how many, how, where all we can hide these on these people. Uh, we did leave a squishy stress ghost at the jail <laughs> <laughs> for the prisoners. Um, and we got one EVP saying, squishy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think That's we have a fan here. So I think <laughs> maybe leaving squishy ghosts at, locations too for the spirits but you know if it helps them with their stress we're good we're okay. yeah. <laughs> especially if you get people that come through and instigate they can like be like okay that person's gone let's exactly. go get that squishy toy Let, let's go back to our yeah. normal selves <laughs> just focus on the zen of the squishy toy yeah <laughs> yeah your happy place yeah. yeah, that's one thing that we're trying to do with our team. And even in our YouTube videos, we're trying to make it more participation. Our YouTube videos, um, we've got audio or we've got video that will say audience participation. Can you find the EVPs or can you find out, find the whole sentences or um, find the investigative information that we need to solve this particular issue? problem and i didn't realize that was going to be such a popular thing but a lot of people are using our videos to train their ears for evps mm -hmm. which is i'm all about evidence review i love it i mm -hmm. that's my zen yeah and seeing other people go this is actually pretty awesome this actually i love doing this it's like yes now you understand yeah like, exactly meditation yeah. that goes behind evp yes yeah so yeah. yeah yeah just don't do a fill in the blank question oh <laughs> got plenty of those yeah it's like exactly. oh i always hated those on quizzes going <laughs> now that you've read this Fill in the blank. It's like, oh, man, I didn't read it that closely. <laughs> yeah. But I just I just think it's nice to try and bring in your audience, your followers, the community itself to understand that what you're seeing on TV, the ghost adventures, ghost hunters, those shows – are not actually what's going on at an investigation. Right. Yeah. So here's some audience participation to show you some of what is actually going to go on during an investigation and what happens when we get finished and we have to do the evidence review. It's not automatically, oh, there's, you know, an EVP right there. You know, hey, like the TV shows have. <laughs> Yeah. A lot of work that goes into this. Yeah. I, I always like to tell people the ghost shows do a lot of great to bring awareness to our field, but they do a disservice of showing it very inaccurately. Yep. Like ghost hunters used to say, we spent a week here. This is the evidence we found. So you knew it was condensed down. Right. Now everybody is just, okay, so we investigated here. Here's what we got. And it's like, you got all that in one night? Really? And it's like, nobody has a concept of it how much days. time was really they were there. <laughs> how much evidence was yeah. caught, used, what wasn't. Oh, you got that. Okay, there's a lot of that, too. A lot of that too probably has to do with the network. Right. Yeah. And a lot of people look at it like, oh, you guys were only there for a night. So you have what, five, 10 hours of evidence review? Um, no, let's multiply that by the Ooh. number of investigators. And that's just for audio. Yeah. And then let's do that again for video. And then I don't know, I'm a little OCD with our, with our team. We have anywhere between two to 3,000 photos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. 
it, it's not going to be a wham, bam, done in three hours. Type. Yeah. Can you load that up tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. It's like, what? <laughs> Although some of the team members go, Lauren, you got all the audio done. Well, like I said, it's Zen. And if I <laughs> today, it's like my white noise. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, Carla is probably going to get tired of me telling the story, but doing the ghost walk, I went and took a picture of a <laughs> courtyard and a guy walks up to me because we were the only two that said we were paranormal investigators on this ghost walk. And he goes, what'd you get? And I'm like, in my mind, I'm going, well, my phone's telling me I got this. EV, the spirit over here. There's an orb over here. <laughs> Make sure you check out this spot for a ghost. And then what comes out about this, I got to put it on a computer to look at it. And he's like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Our, our, it's a camera phone. It's not going to tell me instantly what was there. <laughs> yeah. It was only that quick. <laughs> oh, I wish. I know. Although that would take half the fun out of it. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah. Especially when they're too participatory. Yeah. And that's not much of an investigation. They're just basically showboating at that point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, I mean, there's been times on investigations where when you're in a lull or you're just just all sitting around a room or something like that, and you're really not even investigating. You have the equipment going, but you're just BSing with each other and stuff and, and, and having fun and just talking about whatever, life in general and stuff. That's the entertainment sometimes that spirit likes. Oh, yeah. It's just like, oh, they look like fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's kind of what happened at the last investigation. It was, Oh, I think we ate dinner at about 3.30 in the morning. I yeah, guess it's but... breakfast at that point. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, we were just sitting around the table and just talking, and we had some of the best EVP interaction during that time period because we were talking, and then we had some of the – prisoners there wanting to input their opinions about uh well one of them wanted their opinion about paranormal investigation which was <laughs> um I always love those <laughs> <laughs> tell us how you really feel um but you know the type of food we were eating or um one person one individual said that um our Cryptid Hunter said that he was drinking an energy drink and we got an EVP coming in right afterwards saying that's bad for you. It's bad for your heart. <laughs> well, it's bad for you all around. It's yeah. a great interaction. And I love those moments where you yeah. don't, when you're not <clears throat> and you're not forcing yeah. the interaction. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's, I will say, though, I'm waiting for you guys, if you are eating at the site, like if you have like a bag of chips and all of a sudden you get this like female disembodied voice going, can you pass me a chip? Oh, okay. So <laughs> we did Gill House, and I don't know if you guys know what, who, what Gill House is. Mm -mm. Gill mm -hmm. House is in Galleon, Ohio. Galleon, Ohio, it was one of the first top 10 cities in the United States to run off of Tesla's hydro system for electricity. Okay. This house, um, who's who in history has been through this house? Um, Mina, Thomas Edison's second wife, was best friends with the Gills. So Thomas Edison reluctantly was forced to hang out at this house a lot. Yeah. Talk to him. He's not a nice guy. He's a jerk. Um, and Henry Ford, and Fisker, and, oh, what's his name? Oh, shit. It was who's who of the Industrial Revolution during that time period. So they're all, like, they all pop in off and on during investigations. Uh -huh. um, we've got Edison's EVP, and we've got Ford's EVP. Like I said, Edison's a jerk. Um, and it's Sir Edison, if you're going to talk to him. That's how he <laughs> 
Yeah, good luck. I already got that. an attitude. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We get to go back and I get to talk to him. I'm going to try and be sweeter to him, but it's going to be hard. <laughs> um, so we had brought brownies. Of course, you know, sugar. Why not have a sugar rush? Brownies and donuts for just investigation. And then we had monster energy drinks, you know, covering that whole food pyramid healthily. Very well. Oh, um, sweet. We do the okay. same thing. <laughs> so we were investigating up in the attic and all of a sudden Mike said, I'm getting hungry. Can we go downstairs? And we had a spirit box session going on and a little kid's voice comes through saying, what's downstairs? He said, brownies, donuts. Shut off the spirit box and you start to hear this pounding on the floor like someone's running wow <laughs> and so i just figured okay someone's really excited about these brownies and donuts i don't blame them i kind of am too but <laughs> I'm not so we get downstairs and i don't know something inside me said bring out the k2 meter bring out the emf Ooh, the little kid was down there we did a spirit box session. He was down there. He was trying to get out the brownies and donuts. And we had a good 30 minute interaction with him trying to get out the brownies and donuts. And then he asked for pizza. It was one of those like, oh, this is so cool. So we gave him a brownie. We gave him a brownie. And then he said, I don't want a brownie. I want a chocolate donut. And then we kind of made it into, you know, if you can get into the box, you can have the donut. You got to prove to us that you can get into the box. Um, we had the brownie knocked to the floor. Really? He didn't get the donut, but he got, he tried to get the brownie or he was mad at the brownie. But it was one of those, oh my Lord, this kid needs a sugar high. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> it would have been funny to come back to the room and have a bite taken out of the donut. Right? <laughs> a bite? It'd be funny if the box was empty. Well, I, I, that was one of the funniest interactions. Oh, I bet. I knew, I, having a kid and knowing her response to brownies and donuts and then having this response with this child, I'm just like, oh my lord. <laughs> kids don't change they That's really wild. don't no. <laughs> although I'm kind of impressed the kid knew the word pizza apparently the investigators who have come before us in that investigative um, location has ordered pizza before and this kid wanted pizza and at one point he said pepperoni really <laughs> <laughs> he's got his order down I just yeah. don't know if anyone listens to him while they're ordering. <laughs> or what's funny is if the drivers like are like, no, we're not delivering because nobody's ever there. <laughs> that would be we're, weird for a we're driver. We're tired of always driving over that. there with pepperoni pizzas <laughs> and nobody's there to pay the bill. Getting a phone call from an abandoned. Oh, well, that I wonder. <laughs> that would be actually um, I should ask that question of the um, docent the next time, because <laughs> that would be that would be pretty funny if that does happen. I know the police get called there a lot. Yeah. And it's usually because a woman's screaming, but it's dark when they get there. There's no one there. Mm. Okay. And here's the weird part. There's no telephone in the house. But yeah, they get called there. Yes. <laughs> I bet you those cops probably go. I'm not going. <laughs> I'm not taking that assignment. Yeah. Well, I imagine a lot of locations have police that do that. Like, uh, yeah. well, thank you. It's we're, your turn. We're good. <laughs> and the rookie. It's it's That's his right. hazing day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Craziness. Send in the new guy. <laughs> <laughs> he needs experience with this. Yes. <sighs> well, we're at an hour, 18 minutes. Do you have any other questions, Carla? 
No, I think I'm good. I think we should have you back later on in the year. Oh, I would absolutely love that. So we can see what you've been up to. <laughs> I would absolutely yeah. love that. Okay. Okay, we'll do that. We've got some new places on our list, so. Ooh, any you can share? Yeah. Um, we've been invited to, I think it's an auction house that's on a really old property in Owensboro, Kentucky. We'll be their um, outsource team. So we can validate what the first team has gone through. Oh, interesting. So that's cool. That one I'm looking forward to because they've had heavy furniture to knock it knocked over. So really, we're bringing a couple of new, you know, send the new guy in. We're bringing yeah. a couple <laughs> of new investigators to experience some of that. Um, then we've got a house in Michigan that hardly anybody's allowed to investigate um, because most investigators spiritual beliefs and personal beliefs don't align with the owners or the locations that mm -hmm. we got in. So we've got to, we're going to be able to do that one, the Morton house. And then there's a new location that opened up in Akron, Ohio, a speakeasy. And we got to book that one for Halloween. Nice. Oh, nice. I know. I'm really excited about that one. Really cool. Are you guys going to go in costumes? Um, I'm thinking about it. I've got some period costumes that might be right up their alley yeah. to the speakeasy time. So yeah, nice. It'll be awesome. And we're doing Crown Point um, Jail in Indiana, where uh, Rod Dillinger escaped from. Yep, I know that jail well. Uh, yeah, we'll see if we can get you back on in early December. Or November sometime and see what would, you're up to. I would absolutely love it. Yeah. We're yeah. excited for that. All righty. Well, let's set something up and yeah, we'll do that. Most definitely. Well, I appreciate you guys having me on tonight and it's been wonderful talking to you too. It's, it's well, been great talking to you. Yeah. Very informative. And appreciate you coming on and representing your team and yeah. yourself. And yeah, I mean, like I, I was mentioning in the beginning, you know, usually we kind of have a feeling of how the night's going to go, what questions have been asked, haven't been asked. And with you, it was like brand spanking new. So we were like, yeah, this was really fun getting to know your team and yeah and hopefully how you, someday our paths will cross and maybe do a collaboration yeah. oh absolutely would love that oh my gosh that'd be so much fun. that would be awesome that maybe be get you to come back to texas and maybe we get to go hang out in michigan <laughs> yeah. we oh we could definitely do that yeah <laughs> 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 hey, you had me at Tex-Mex earlier, so you know, <laughs> back at some point. Yeah. Well, Carla and I right now, we like to go investigate a military base that was a uh, German POW camp yeah. in Indian ground. So, you know, if you have any interest in that, you know. Oh, I definitely do. Is that Fort, <laughs> Fort Walters? Yeah. Yes, it is. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Crazy place. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've been, if the team had actually gone down that direction this year, which we kind of looked at it, that one was on our list. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, we would have been happy to, you know, tour. <laughs> yeah. There's Hang a out. lot, there's a lot down there. Just oh, yeah. Even around that location that's can be looked at. Oh, sure. well, there's a lot down there in Texas, period. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah. envision a I envision a takeover of Jefferson <laughs> between the teams. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon us. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. That could be a we can, you know, para unity event. That that's right. Yeah. You know, we'll most do definitely we can do that. That's what history haunts and legends is is a para unity event. Yeah, it is. So let's get a couple more teams and we'll sure. cover Jefferson. 
<laughs> Give them a yeah. heads up. <laughs> you know, and as we go through, the ghosts are like, yeah, we're not going to deal with this tonight. No, no, we need You're a back vacation. again. <laughs> no, they'll be like, going, who did you guys bring this time? That's, that's exactly what it'll be. They're new. <laughs> yeah, I'll be like, oh, we get to do a new our show again. They haven't seen it. <laughs> uh, oh, that would be great. Oh my gosh. Well, this has yeah. been fun. It has it been. Has. Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. And I gotta say, I've been watching all night the artwork behind you. That is so cool. I actually painted that. Very cool. Yeah, that is really cool. I've been like trying to figure out if it's animal, plant, nature, and I'm like, it's actually just kind of like all. <laughs> it is. Um, yeah. Like I said, I have a thriving art career. I'm an internationally licensed watercolor artist. Nice. So that's one of the pieces I did. That's Very watercolor? Cool. Yeah. Very Man, cool. it does not look watercolor. <laughs> It's a lot of learning to layer with watercolor. It was a, a huge learning curve on that. Wow. We may have to have you back on sooner just to do an art color show. <laughs> I'm, I'm game. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, it's the energy that surrounds us. Art surrounds us. It's got that's energy. Right. It does. And, you know, sometimes you're not even present while you're creating it because you're kind of in a zone. So, yep. yeah, exactly. How muse comes through. So, yeah, yeah you can connect it all. And it's always fun when you come out of it, out of the zone, and you're looking at it going, okay, now which way is the right <laughs> way up and down? Right? I just created this. I should know this. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, my gosh. All righty. All right, well, I think it's time we call it a night because yeah. it's been a fun time. But, you know, if we keep going, then, you know, we'll end up being two shows in one. And Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, and plus we all need to get some sleep at some point. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. I do appreciate you guys for having me on. Absolutely. Well, it's our pleasure. And thank you again for accepting my request to uh, have you guys on. Yeah. No problem. And I look forward to doing it again with you too. Oh, for sure. Amazing. We'll get, we'll get you. We'll get you on the calendar for sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll definitely okay. be in touch. All right. Well, thank you guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Okay. <sighs> Uh, yeah, I know. I'm... Oh, yeah, it's March is next. Oh, I'm in the wrong month. <laughs> March is in an hour and a half. <laughs> so there's a little specialness to our next week's episode because Carl and I this weekend, where are we going? This weekend? Yeah. We are going to Myrtle's Plantation in Louisiana. So our show Tuesday is going to have Maddie Vasquez from Maddie G Smack Talk. Yeah. And we're going to be investigating with her at Myrtle's. And so we are excited to have her on the show and... Get to know the story behind the Smack Talk duo. Yeah. And She's uh, so much fun. So much fun. Yeah, you guys will love her. She's mm -hmm. a lot of fun. And I'm sure those of you who have watched the Smack Talk episodes will be looking at us and going, How are you guys going to handle that show? So stay tuned and find out. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, and if you're investigating like we are this weekend, have fun and be safe. <laughs>